Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. Recently Rocket Lab announced the Neutron Rocket, which is an 8 ton to low Earth orbit reusable first stage rocket. So that's 8 tons to low Earth orbit while reusing the first stage. And they gave some details, but not a whole lot. We know it's kerosene oxygen. We know its diameter is 4.5 meters. And other than that, not a whole lot of information. So what the internet did with that, apparently, at least Twitter, um, was turned it into the atom rocket. Because now we had a neutron rocket. There was a pre-existing pre proton rocket. And of course, Rocket Lab's own electron rocket. So they put them together in an atom rocket, or something phrased equivalently. Now, the thing is, I saw those images, and I have to say, perhaps having an entire generation develop their image uh, editing skills based on memes might not have been the best idea. Um, they need to improve the image editing skills. So. But there's also the the whole idea of how they put together the rocket. They decided to put the electron, and let me bring up an electron. So this is my body for the neutron rocket, and then I'm using Rayer Nix proton, and the electron is from uh, Super Penguin. But when they put the electron on, they neglected the size of the electron rocket. Uh, you can see it's really tiny. I'm not putting it on right now, and they they uh, in the image editing they seem to make it really big. The problem is you can't put the electron on the side of the neutron rocket. It's not going to do anything. So here's a rule of thumb for people designing rockets. Incidentally, if your booster is less than one tenth the thrust of the core, you probably don't need the booster. <laughs> that is not enough of a booster. You need a bigger booster. So. That is a general rule of thumb. You're not going to get boosters that are that low thrust. They're not useful. And the sort of minimum thrust for this kind of rocket, given its diameter and what its capabilities, uh, probably we're talking about 700 tons of thrust, whereas the Electron has 18 tons of thrust. So it's not enough uh, to, I mean, you need 70 tons of thrust from your booster. So slapping it on the side is not a good configuration for your atom rocket, is what I'm saying. Now, the, the good thing is, for the atom rocket, is that the proton is actually really close to the diameter of the neutron. It's only a little bit off. You can see there is a gap here. I'm going to try and hide the gap a little bit. Uh, there is the whole matter of the hot staging issue, but the diameter of neutron is 4.5, and I think the diameter of proton is 4.2 or something like that. Well, depending on exactly where you're measuring it. So this is the second stage of proton, which is the logical thing to use on top of the neutron, but it's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit too heavy for the neutron rocket. And the way I decided to figure out the neutron rocket is very simple. Uh, first, we use a procedural tank. So this is the first order estimate for the neutron rocket. So we get a regular procedural tank. And this is what I did to work the numbers out. Size it to the 4.5. Judging from the image they have on the website, the actual tank is 22 meters. I mean, there's going to be sort of an inter-tank bit, but you got to have some room at the top for the interstage and some room at the bottom for the engines and all that business. Um, oh, by the way, before I forget, the landing legs are from KK launcher pack, so that's where I got those from. They should be a little bit smaller based on the image, but uh, tweak seal did not seem to work at all on this, as you can see. It doesn't do anything. So anyway, so I couldn't tweak scale them down. So what I did was I just filled this with the kerosene and oxygen, and uh, based on, uh, and we want 22 length, and based on 86% uh, utilization, configure this tank. Uh, it's a little bit heavier because of the inter-tank uh, sorry, the inner stage and the bottom bit that isn't included in the tankage mass. So anyway, so that is what we have there. And that's how I got those numbers. And then based on those numbers, we can figure out how powerful the engines are. However, like I said, the upper stage here, the proton second stage, is a little bit heavy. That does allow for the first stage to come back. That's really easy for the first stage to come back because it's not getting that far out. But 
we were talking about these engines are actually my sheer strut engines. Uh, they are it's supposed to be 1000 kilonewton class, but a little bit short. Basically, um, they are larger nozzle Merlin engines, <laughs> more, more or less. So they're a little bit more vacuum optimized, their gas generator. And yeah, there are seven of them at the bottom here. Uh, you could fit nine Merlin engines. Merlin engines are a little bit smaller because of the smaller nozzle ratio. So there's a larger nozzle ratio, so I can only fit seven. Judging from the image on the Rocket Lab website, they only seem to have four at the bottom, but that would be inconvenient for landing. You would, would want five at least, and perhaps seven, but uh, I, it didn't seem like they had nine. We're talking about 1,000 kilonewtons out of the engines either way, somewhere around there. Whether it's gas generator or stage combustion or something else, after all, they had electric pump generated engines on Electron, but they're probably not going to do that with this these engines. But uh, they could come up with something interesting, who knows. Uh, so anyway, those are the engines that we have down here. And you can see they barely lift us up at all. Uh, I could maybe increase the thrust by fiat, just saying, nope, we're going to have uh, an extra 100 kilonewtons. And you'll go, well, see, you should put the Electron boosters on. Well, no. They're going to do negligible amount because one electron booster provides 180 kilonewtons of thrust just about. One of these engines is around already 900. So you would rather have just some tank with one of these engines on the side rather than having the electron rocket. So that leaves us the question, where do we put the electron rocket? Well, I think you've already figured it out. Of course, the electron rocket is a great upper stage. <laughs> it so happens to fit inside the largest proton fairing, by the way. And I always thought that this is how it should be. And indeed, this is how it is. The only thing is I have to make a little adjustment here because we're not going to be able to steer this at all uh, when the engines are out. We need to orient it. So what this is doing, this atom rocket is doing, is sending a Pioneer probe with about 7,490 meters per second of thrust. So the first two stages can get it to orbit. And then 7,500 meters of thrust to get it to uh, Jupiter flyby or something like that. That's more than enough. So it'll do the Pioneer mission and that without a cryogenic stage, well, a, a hydrogen stage, we'll say. So we don't have the Centaur stage or anything like that. We don't have the third stage of Proton either because we're effectively using Electron as that third stage. And yeah, uh, what we need is little RCS thrusters. Well, it's a bit haphazard, but it's a start. Now, we have a bit of a problem with the reusability because they didn't tell us what the heck it was using for the RCS. I don't know if it's going to be cold gas thrusters. I didn't build in RCS thrusters here. And the image didn't have any grid fins. So I don't know what they're going to be doing about that. Maybe they'll have grid fins. They ought to have grid fins, but we don't have grid fins right now. So, but yeah, we're not going to attempt to reuse it right now. I'll have to build that in later. This is just going to be, uh, well, oops, we don't want doubling that. We'll just reserve the fuel and see if it can manage it. The thing is the Delta V is a little bit tight. After all, with reusability, it's only supposed to be eight tons to low Earth orbit. And I think what we're going to do is under fuel the electron stage because it's, it's otherwise going to be 11 tons or something. That will still be enough for a Jupiter transfer. It's still pushing it though. Let me lock these tanks so it doesn't top it off. We don't really need all nine engines at the bottom of the electron rocket either. That's excessive but I'll carry them just because technically they're supposed to be there. All right, so this is my atom rocket. It has the downside that you don't get the actual electron tag on the side, right? Though using them as side boosters, you'll see proton, neutron, and I'll say electron there, and that's nicer, of course, but it's also illogical. And I am fundamentally Vulcan, even though I don't like the Vulcan. Well, the, the, I have trouble with the ULA Vulcan rocket. I like the Soviet Vulcan rocket, but anyway, that's beside the point. Let's go. Okay, I think that's close enough to a Jupiter window to work. 
All right, let's see if we can fling Pioneer over to Jupiter successfully. This is a long shot. Okay, Thrall is up, SAS is on. I mean, I just threw this together. So, neutron, proton, and a hidden electron, okay? It's a hydrogen rocket, except there's no actual hy Well, there's hydrogen in the form of other molecules, but not the liquid hydrogen. Ignition. And launch. Very slow off the pad because, like I said, it's overburdened with the proton upper stage. You can tell that that if you look at the website for Rocket Lab, their upper stage is nowhere near this big. And these are dense fuels, so yeah. And technically we want to hot stage the proton engines. That may or may not result in the destruction of the neutron rocket, we'll see. Another uh, possible objection to this is that the electron stage is not reusable like this. On the bright side, the proton second stage has plenty of thrust to weight ratio. On the downside, I don't think we're giving it enough of a boost here. Well, uh, barge landing is not returned to launch site. I don't think I have to reserve as much fuel as I normally do. Um, let's say 10 seconds, so... Oh. Oh, right. Okay, uh, I think, I think, get safe. <laughs> that, that was awkward as all heck, though. Um, okay, SAS, please. I think I'll let go of the fairings. It's a little bit dodgy, but... Okay, we're safe. Off they go. I tried putting the Voyager probe on here first, but it didn't fit in the fairings. So, this one did, though. Uh, you know, we actually want to be higher overall. I can't throw down the engine, so we're gonna have to pitch down a bit. It's not gonna be pretty, but... We are a bit too... Uh, too shallow with the first stage. Okay, trying to control this. We have the Delta V, it's just that we needed to get into space. <laughs> We were coasting a little bit too shallow. Okay, well, it's a little bit of a little bit of a lopsided orbit, but it is an orbit. Six forty-five by one forty-seven. Well, fine. We don't really want both decouplings to happen. I just want that decoupler. Okay, separation. All right, so it's just the electron now, and we're only counting on one ignition from the electron. Get the RCS ports ready. Okay, they're working. All right, so let's try for Jupiter. Well, that's a little bit more than what we have. I don't know if uh, the Pioneer Probe's own hydrazine can help us out getting the remainder. Oh, this is a double encounter with Jupiter. Pretty high, though. We've got a Jupiter cycler here. Okay, so that is a little bit more than we have, but we'll see. Maybe the Pioneer probe with its 36 hydrazine has something to work with. I'm not sure. I haven't flown the Pioneer probe in a long time. I suppose we could have really completed the package with like a little photon stage underneath the Pioneer probe, but then it probably wouldn't have fit in the, the proton fairing. I think that's the, yeah, we want to keep that with the Pioneer, and Ignition. Guess we can expend the RCS that we carried here too. If we didn't carry so much RCS fuel, it would have been better. Obviously if we had just put a vacuum variant Rutherford instead of the nine surface Rutherfords, that would have been much better too. Serious G-forces. It says we didn't quite make it, but... Uh, well, we didn't quite make it. I wonder why, because there was reading enough Delta V. We also have some spare liquid oxygen. That's 
suboptimal. Okay, I think I've had enough of this RCS. Let's stop that. And... Oh, uh, this stage actually has a built-in decoupler, but anyway. Oh, oh, it got tossed a bit. Uh, well, it's having enough trouble just trying to stop itself from spinning. I don't know how well it's gonna... ...do trying to complete this, so... I don't think we quite made Jupiter this time. I don't think I can wait for it. <laughs> that would take too long. Yep, okay. So... Some refinement to my atom rocket, my version of the atom rocket. Everybody has their own version of the atom rocket, potentially, but... My version of the atom rocket needs a little bit of tweaking, but we're close to being able to send Pioneer over to Jupiter, so that's pretty good. Um, on the website, they had a goal for how much it could send to Venus. That's a whole different thing. Anyway, so there you have it, the atom rocket. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.